honestly, I, I think um, the only way for us to get to ASI is to allow AI to program AI, right? ASI is artificial super intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, what we really need to get to is to get to ASI, because if we are at a, an immature baby AGI level, that's when bad things happen. That's when you have a superpower, but you have an immature understanding and ethics and consciousness. If you have the ability a toddler. To, to have, uh, yes, if you have a toddler with a gun, it's a thing, yeah. right? <laughs> and, and that's, that's yes. what kind of very powerful, but not complete trained systems are. And, and when it gets into the hands of these bad actors that you were talking about, things will happen. So we, we need to get as quickly as possible to ASI versus as quickly as possible to that toddler with a gun. Yeah. And the only way to do that is to have it be self-recursive in terms of training. Why, why are humans able to, to have done what we have, even though our brains have not changed in 100,000 years? Actually, it's gotten a little bit smaller, right? It's because we are recursively teaching each other. We are, we, every generation teaches the prior next generation and we learn and accumulate. We're able to adjust how we work and how, how we do things. And if we allow these AI systems to do the same thing, which is, which is already happening actually. And, and honestly, it's not something you can stop because even, you know, recently there was the Devin, I don't know if you saw that, the, 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 the um, you know, the kind of Devin announcement, which is an AI engineer that's, you know, uh, made of AI and he can go in and change his own systems. There was some controversy in terms of how real those demos were. But I think a lot of people do agree that it, it didn't perform exactly what they had promised, but it, it is actually significantly better than what was possible with just GPT-4. So like 10x better. Now, so, it, you know, you just imagine in a few years or with or within a few months, probably when GPT-5 comes out, it will probably have the capability to do a lot of those things. And when you do that, you are able to then progress at a very different rate. And we need to get to that rate to, to be able to, to get the breakthroughs that we're looking for. Uh, you know, humans work on you know, probably about two to three hours a day of quality work, right? And, and our, our brains, our signals to our brain is about hundred meters per second. You know, these machines are gonna work 24 seven and they are, you know, traveling at the speed of light. Their signals are traveling at the speed of light and you've got, you know, 100,000 of them on in one data set. Right? So, so um, it just we we cannot be we cannot limit this with our capabilities. We we should allow this to happen. Now we do need to be careful because if we allow it to happen, we need to allow it to happen. This is why it's actually important to have a metaverse ecosystem because if we trained it and then we kind of let's let's test it out on a, a mini matrix uh, universe for AI mm -hmm. right? in, in the movie a, uh, Matrix, they're putting humans into a matrix and a simulation. To allow them, you know, to to kind of live this world and see what happens. What we should be doing is to create a metaverse system and allow these AI to go in there, and then they can run at you know at you know ten x or a million x speed, and we'll see. Okay, well, is this a dangerous AI or not? Is this an AI that's going to kill us? Is this an AI that's going to misunderstand us? And we put it in there so that it can um, play out its timing, right? Because one of the things that people were afraid of is that you know there's now this uh, this fear that people will say, you know. In 2024, nothing bad happens, but this super AI in 2025 starts to destroy the world, right? But let's let just put it into this this world and then run it through the next million years and see what does it do, right? And and see if it see if it becomes an evil or, or a benign or a compassionate AI. And I, I think I think though you know so so we we should let that happen, but we should have it in a controlled manner, and we should let it happen in a globally um, collaborative manner. Uh, because we need to do what you said. We need to make sure that everybody's culture and language and history are all represented. And by knowing everything, it will then take into everybody's uh, perspectives into account to give you the guidance that, that, that we need as a species. Because our, our leaders today are probably not doing that. Yeah, no, I, I, would, I do believe I would, that humanity have a higher uh, probability of successful survival under a benign digital superintelligence than under human uh, human leadership.